Good day, and today we're going to discuss simple verb tenses. When we look at simple verb tenses, we're going to be looking at the simple present verbs, simple past verbs, and simple future tense verbs. So when we discuss what a simple present verb is, you have the base form. If you have a singular noun such as I, you're going to have a singular verb work. Now, sometimes we need to have the S put onto the end because of the singular way that it works. For example, he, she, and it being singular pronouns, they have to have the S sound on the verb because that makes it singular as well. He works, she works, it works. Now, sometimes in our singular verb pre uh, present tense, we are going to be adding an ES to the end such as with I watch, the pronoun she is going to have plural and it's going to be she watches with an ES. And sometimes we have to change the vowel that is at the end of the verb, such as I study. We're going to change that Y to an I in order to make it plural into he studies with an IES. So the general rules to a simple present tense verb First of all, we're just looking at a sense of a general truth. The sky is blue. Using the linking verb is to go with the singular noun is making a present tense truth. Usually, though, when we look at present tense nouns, they're going to probably be an action verb, such as I always brush after I eat, Bob watches TV every night, and Sarah works five days a week. Now, there's also sometimes a statement of something that exists at the time of speaking. Because of my pronoun I being singular, I don't need to have an S at the end, such as I hear the train coming and I smell smoke. Lastly, it might be a scheduled event or an activity, such as my plane leaves at 8.30 tomorrow. With plane being singular, I need to have the ES on the word leave. So what I'd like to try now is to actually see how well we can do adding in singular uh, verbs along with the singular and plural nouns. Now, you see I've got a word bank at the top for you to choose from, and so we're going to use each one of these words once. Now, we have to decide whether or not we add the letter S to the end of them. Let's try the first one. Anne blank handball very well. Well, I see Anne, and I have her having a ball. She, she possesses a ball, so I'm wondering if she's playing a, a ball game of some sort. And I do have in my word bank the word play. So I would be putting in the word play in that blank, and play handball very well. However, being that this is a singular noun, Anne, I need to add the S onto my end of my verb. So the correct word would be Anne plays handball very well. The next two sentences kind of go together in tandem. The swimming pool blank at 7 o'clock in the morning and it blank at 9 o'clock in the evening. Well, a swimming pool can't do a lot of human things such as speaking or taking or doing something. But I'm wondering if the swimming pool is opening and closing at these time periods. And since the first one talks about 7 in the morning, I have a feeling that's when the swimming pool opens. And that would be the correct verb. The swimming pool opens with an S. Because I have the singular noun pool, I need to have the singular verb opens with an S. Therefore, I think that I'm going to be using the word close in the next line. And I'm probably also going to use the S form of closes. Because of the pronoun it, I need to have the word with an S. It closes at 9 in the evening. Next, we move on to bad driving blank many accidents. Well, usually an accident has a cause and an effect situation, and I see my verb cause in my word bank. Now, driving is again a singular action, so because it's a singular noun, I'd like a singular verb. And looking at my three previous sentences, I'm going to be sticking an S, actually an ES, because cause has its own E, usually we just consider it an S, but certainly causes with an ES at the end is a singular action verb. 
Now let's look at the plural forms. If we have a plural subject such as my parents, my parents blank in a very small flat. Well, a flat is another word for an apartment, and so I'm wondering if my parents live in a very small flat. And of course, my parents being plural, I need a plural form of the verb, and live without the S would be a plural form. The Olympic Games blank place every four years. Now, I've already used five words out of, my, out of my word bank, and so I have only a few left to pick from. I've got the word speak, I've got the word take, and I've got the word, oh goodness, uh, speak and take. Well, if I'm looking at Olympic Games, they're going to take place every four years. They're not speaking because they're not human. And since they're games plural, I'm going to go ahead and use the verb take without an S. The next one, they are good students. They always blank their homework. So our verb of do can be turned with an ES into does, but we have the plural form. Knowing that we have multiple students, that plural pronoun of they is asking for the plural, the plural verb of do. They always do their homework. And so our last word that we have, my students speak good English, or little English. Students is a plural noun, therefore we need the plural verb speak. Next, we'll look at the simple past verb tenses. So you have the base form just like you did in the present tense, but this time instead of S or ES, we're going to pair at the end the, the verb format of ED, such as when you have the verb work, you might be working yesterday in the past, so you're going to say I worked yesterday, adding the ED to the base form of the verb. Now, sometimes you might also have irregular verbs. So with the word, the base form being eat, he eats lunch at noon, there is a irregular form of the word eat where we might be spelling it eight, A-T-E. So every once in a while when it comes to verb formats, we have a different spelling. Now, the general rules for past simple tense, an activity that has begun and completed at a particular time in the past, you're again looking at your linking verbs. Instead of saying, I am going to work, you would say, I went to work yesterday morning. Now, past tense verbs are commonly used with after and before, such as after Bob ate dinner, he drove to CEC or the students arrived in class before the teacher. So you're seeing a time passing, so that's how you know you are in the past. You might also see with simple past verbs, used to, in other words, past habits. So you're gonna have the, the verbs form used to and then the base form of the verb. Used to is going to be for the past tense, I used to, and then you're gonna use the base form of the verb, I used to ride horses when I was a kid. So now we have our word bank on the right hand side of the screen and we're going to give the correct form of the following verbs from present to past tense. Number one, I blank to the mall after school. If it was present tense you, would, you could say I go to the mall after school. But we have an irregular verb here where we're going to change go into the past tense. I went to the mall after school. My brother, and you have the present tense, see a bear an hour ago. My brother see a bear an hour ago. Well, we have another irregular tense verb here in which we are going to change the present tense see over to the word saw. My brother saw a bear an hour ago. Do Mike visit his grandmother last night? Well, we do have to change the present tense of the verb do over to past tense. Now this one we're going to change it with an ES form and actually stick a capital letter on it because it begins the sentence. Does Mike visit his grandmother last, did, did Mike visit his grandmother last night? 
Number four, Alex did not blank last weekend. Alex did not work last weekend. Now, sometimes, as we said on the previous slide, we actually take the present tense verb and actually use what we've got. Alex did not work last weekend. Is Judy and Liz at last month's meeting is an incorrect form because this is no longer present tense. And we have a plural format here because we want to know about both Judy and Liz. So we're going to change our is to a, a present tense uh, excuse me, a present tense plural, and then we're going to change it in the past tense. So we have instead of is Judy and Liz at last month's meeting, we're going to say were Judy and Liz at last month's meeting. Our next sentence, sentence number six, we is once again in plural form. We are not happy after the sad ending. Well, that does sound correct, except for now this has the word after. Remember we talked about before and after. That's telling us we're in the past. So we need to change our to the past tense. We were not happy after the sad ending. Are you see Jody's new dog yesterday? Now, are is a present tense, and yesterday tells us we are in the past, so we do have to change our present tense over to the past tense of did. Sorry, I didn't hear you at the door is the correct form. Instead of using the present tense don't, we have an irregular form of did not, and then with our contraction, we push it together to I didn't. Sorry, I didn't hear you at the door. Question number nine says, I study English for two years. Now that would be correct if it was present tense, but we are including the past two years. So we need to push study into the past tense. And we're going to take off the I, the Y, and change it into an I as we change it to the word studied. I studied English for two years. What do you eat for lunch yesterday? Again, like we saw in question number seven, the word yesterday pushes this in the past tense. So instead of using the word do, just like we did in question number seven, you would say, what did you eat for lunch yesterday? <clears throat> Our next simple tense is past future tense. So you still have the base form when you start out, but this time we're going to add in the word will in order to make it future tense. So you would say, I will work, and then you're going to have your time period. I will work tomorrow. He will eat dinner later. Now, depending upon whether or not you have other words that give us time periods, you might stick a linking verb in front of the base form, such as am, is, or are, such as I am going to work tomorrow. She is going to eat dinner at Al's restaurant. We are going to study unit one tonight. So of course, when we use future tense, we want to use it to tell about a future event or activity. Our break will begin at 8.10. I will study later. I'm going to study later. Now, sometimes we're not going to use the going to. We're just going to keep the future tense of will. Wait a second, I will help you with that sofa. If you try to move it by yourself, your back will be out for a week. Otherwise, sometimes we will use going to and not will. I'm going to mow my lawn tomorrow. Now, using the word in parentheses, let's go ahead and complete the text below with the appropriate tenses. So I've given you present tense verbs, and we need to change them into the past future tense. Why are you holding a piece of paper? Well, I write a letter to my friends back home in Texas. We can't use present tense, so we have to use the going to or the will. So we have, I am going to write a letter to my friends back home in Texas. Going to is going to be appropriate here because we haven't yet written it. We're still just holding our piece of paper. So the appropriate would be, I am going to, and then using the base form, write a letter to my friends. I'm about to fall asleep. I need to wake up. 
I get you a cup of coffee. That will wake you up. You have a little bit of a hint here in letter B because of that second sentence, that will wake you up. So the appropriate past future tense would be, I will get you a cup of coffee that will wake you up. Because I need to wake up, I, I will help you with that. Our third question, I can't hear the television. I turn it up so you can hear it. Now with our past future tense here, we're going to have once again have to continue to work on the situation. So because we can't hear the television in letter A, the appropriate would say, I will turn it up so you can hear it. I'm about to actually perform the action for you. Number four, we are so excited about our trip next month to France. We visit Paris, Nice, and Grenoble. So our trip is still next month. And so we are going to visit Paris, Nice, and Grenoble. It is not something I'm immediately going to get to do. So instead of using the word will, like I did in numbers two and three, I'm going to get to it like I did in question number one. So we are going to visit Paris, Nice, and Grenoble makes more sense. Sarah, come to the party. Oliver, be there as well. Now here we don't have a long-term uh, fi uh, finite time away, and so therefore we're going to use the word will. Sarah will come to the party. And now that I've used that in my first sentence, it probably gives a clue to the second sentence. Oliver will be there as well. Number six, it is so hot in here. And Sarah says, I turn the air conditioning on. So because she is about to go and perform the action, we're once again going to use the word will. It is so hot in here. I will turn the air conditioning on. Thank you so much for stopping by to learn about past, present, and future simple tenses of verbs. If you'd like me to go through other parts of speech, please leave a comment down below and let me know what it is you've missed or go check out my other uh, verb videos uh, that I have on the Learning Language Arts channel. And as always, I appreciate it if you subscribed. Take care.